Our next speaker is an acquisition strategist at the U.S. Digital Service. Brent Maravilla uh, previously also served as a, an operational contracting officer at various different federal agencies. He oversees the training program for buying digital services and experiments with different buying approaches. Today, Brent's going to talk with us about how to co-create a procurement from scratch with multiple vendors and a cross-functional team. Please welcome Brett Maravilla. Good afternoon, everybody. Today, I have the voice of a frog. I'm sorry. I brought tea, so maybe that will help a little bit. <clears throat> Yes, I've been a Fed for about 12 years. Um, this is my last week at USDS. We all time out after about four years. Um, I'm going to talk to you about how we ran a, an experiment. We're calling it the co-designed uh, procurement approach. It starts with something I've observed while I've been at USDS. When we're involved early on in a procurement process, we have our hand and, and uh, help draft the, the requirement, the, defi the defined need. The market, we're involved in market research, even the RFP creation. And of course, we're involved in delivery of a, of a product. What that usually leads is to... Wait, that's not... A happy customer. <laughs> The click's like caught up, sorry. Um, here we go. Uh, in the absence of USDS, what I have observed is a prescribed definition of the need, a prescribed technology solution, input from a limited few. Um, in addition, no incorporation of our digital services acquisition principles that we uh, herald at the US Digital Service and not much aligned with the digital services playbook. What that usually leads to is an unhappy end user. Um, <clears throat> we wanted to take a look at this problem because we like to tackle big problems at USDS. Uh, especially some of the user research that was performed was with small innovative vendors because I want them to bid the results were that a lot of vendors feel that collaboration before an RFP is on the street is abysmal. Here's some of the, whoops. Here's some of the quotes that we got, just a few of them. But as you can see, there's, there's often a problem with vendors believing that the RFP is baked for an incumbent. They also believe that there are a lot of assumptions that are baked in early into the procurement, such so that it is very difficult to course correct. There we go. My hypothesis had to do with, in the absence of USDS, because it's not a scalable approach for USDS to be in every organization, is what if we take some very innovative vendors and pull them over and drop them off into the earliest parts of the procurement process? And so while we have seen it, some of our agencies that we engage with, they're really good at asking questions. They're good at discovery. They're good at delivery. Can they help in the earliest parts of the procurement process if we involve them? After all, I don't see anything in, in the FAR that um, says that we can't do this. There's only a, a little bit of information that can't be shared sometimes, such as an independent government cost estimate. And what does it look like if we kick this off with a one day long event by creating together the procurement. I found a willing agency in the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of African American History and Culture. They had been wanting to build a digital minimum viable product for one of their exhibits called Slavery and Freedom. But I had some demands. If I'm going to work with you, you must commit to these things. We're going to build technology according to the playbook. We're going to build a, a procurement according to the digital services acquisition principles. I need a cross-functional team from your agency from the start and throughout. I need high humility. I do not want executives telling the team what features need to be built. This product needs to be built around end users. And we're going to start the procurement from scratch. I don't care if you've even started a draft. We're going to start over. 
because I need the vendors to be there from step one. And we're gonna to default to open. We're gonna create this procurement and start drafting this procurement in, on the internet in a public facing way so that vendors can see where we're headed and they can provide feedback. It's taking agile principles and applying it to the procurement process instead of kind of a waterfall approach, throwing it over the wall, small iterations where you're doing a little bit of drafting of a, of a requirement, a little bit of research, a little bit of RFP uh, drafting, and then going over and over again until it's out the street. I require the agency to go to a training with me for about four hours uh, a week in advance so that during this day-long event, they weren't asking a lot of questions and wondering what Agile software development is. So we talked about the playbook. We talked about acquisition principles. Um, we talked about how we need to structure an RFP that is agnostic to the technology, no solutioning. The day started off, this was June 6th of this summer. The day started off uh, with the principle of kind of buying with end users and not for them. How can we get as close as we can and bring in end users into the procurement process? Right here, what was beautiful with Smithsonian is they readily admitted, and I was happy about this, that they weren't sure who the end users were. But how can we get as close as possible? Well, this digital MVP was based on a physical exhibit. And so we took nine vendors, what you see here, a cross-functional team from the Smithsonian, and, a bunch, and several of us from USDS procurement team, most of the procurement team. Um, but again, we were just there to facilitate. We did not provide inputs. Again, we wanted vendors to provide inputs. So we took them through, uh, it was led by the, uh, the curator of the museum herself, through the exhibit so they could feel the full weight of kind of what this thing is about. So they could build the digital thing that has a similar effect upon the end user that would go, that would go through the physical exhibit. As a next step, um, we went upstairs for the rest of the day. Uh, the first thing we did was we uh, wrote down some of the takeaways that we had from our experience going through that together. Here are some of the words, tears, darkness, America, families, emotion, empathy, shame, moral obligation, moving, patterns, pain, motherhood, resolve. Next, the Smithsonian team, I had them kind of debrief very quickly to the vendors, their current technology stack, um, where they fit in the org chart, those sorts of things. And then we broke up into tables. We had about five different tables. And so at first, for this exercise, it was just Smithsonian tables, and then some of the tables were uh, for vendors. And they workshopped the known knowns, in other words, what we believe to be true about this thing, the known unknowns, what do we have questions about, and then the unknown unknowns. That was a little bit silly because it's like, what are the gotchas? And nobody knows what a gotcha is going to be in advance anyway, and assumptions. And then um, you can see them working there together. Whoops. Pressing right there. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there you see um, everybody uh, working on it together. And so at the end, you had each table report out on those known knowns and known unknowns. And what we saw was this beautiful thing where there was all these aha moments, especially on the Smithsonian side, where they realized, oh, those are a lot of things that we made assumptions about, but the vendors have a lot of really good questions about. We need to address those things in the RFP that we create, or we need to even answer some of them now. One of the most beautiful things that I think I saw was the Smithsonian people saying, I thought we could start a contract and start coding pretty quickly. Now I realize that we need to spend a few months doing discovery and to truly understand who the end users are and what are their problems to be solved. I could have shared those things with them in the months coming up to this, but again, this hypothesis had to do with can vendors provide that value, and they were. Um, later in the day, we broke into small groups again. This time, each table was mixed with Smithsonian people on one side of the table or mixed uh, with, uh, with vendors as well. And each table would have like multiple vendors at them. And they started working, workshopping together the, the problem statement and the assumptions that they had. Hey, vendors, now that you know a little bit about what this, exhibit, this physical exhibit is and the problem to be solved, um, how would you like to pitch? if you could at all, and how would you like to be uh, scored, how you'd like to be evaluated. Um, 
very quickly near the end of the day, we had uh, retrospectives, <clears throat> uh, largely positive. And uh, we started, after that day was over, I had a, a, a colleague taking notes there. And we started putting everything in GitHub, including the notes. So if you want to, oops, sorry. If you want to take a snapshot of that and check it out for yourself, there's the GitHub link on the internet. We've been building in the open from the start. And it's been a good way for us to get continually get feedback from the vendors. In my world, vendors are a form of end users of my procurement process. So I want them to know what's in our brains. And I want them to see the product, the procurement, as it's going along. I want them to give me feedback so that the government can pivot, so that we can create a product product, a, a contract that events, eventually leads to rapid product delivery that delights end users. Um, so this is this RFP is not out on the street. It'll probably go out on the street next week. At that point, I will bow out because my hypothesis has to do with kind of before it's on, before it's on the street. Um, but it's, uh, it's really exciting to see uh, you know, a product vision that says we aim to provide a digital experience that evokes the powerful emotional response of an in-person visit to the museum's slavery and freedom ex exhibition, and also the expands learning opportunities by providing access to dig additional digital resources. And then one last thing, the third bullet point I'm really excited about. To increase and diffuse knowledge about the history of slavery and freedom in order to help audiences understand the roots of racism and social injustice, increase cultural competence and empathy, and inspire multicultural conversation about how to secure a more just society. Incredible. You vendors and the Smithsonian came up with this stuff together. All the features that's gonna be built for this digital product need to relate back to these objectives, need to relate back to this product vision. There's no solutioning here. This also for the RFP, a multi-stage down select where it's stage one, five or so page white paper, and then come in face to face, we'll give you a fictitious epic that we want you to verbally walk through your agile and design process. Then in phase three, and only then, provide a written proposal and a press proposal. We learned some things along the way. Critical ingredients, of course, strong facilitators. They don't need to provide inputs. Uh, a cross-functional agency team, the vendors mentioned that that was critical uh, to success. Also having vendors motivated not by, oh, I'm gonna carve out this procurement in some way or influence it so that only I can bid on it, but we're gonna improve this problem in procurement as a whole. In addition to all of us, all of our cross-functional teams kind of optimizing around solving the problem of the end user. Also, we use this as a teaching hospital. When I started engaging with Smithsonian, I said, look, I'll be great if you create a product that solves your problem, but I'm gonna tell the story loud and proud, because this is a big problem that needs to be solved across government. So I needed to do it openly. Oops. And um, yeah, we're gonna do this in the open. And of course, it, uh, pointing to the digital services playbook was, was critical. That's it, I'm way over. Thank you for your time. <laughs>